Hey guys, this is the AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is the troubleshooting process of a blower motor, alright, that will not stop. It just continues to run regardless of whether you put the thermostat on auto or on. Regardless of that, it continues to run, and even when the system is in off position. So, first things first, we're going to go ahead and turn the power off first. So turn it off at your main power switch. All right, then we're going to go ahead and take the door cover off. Some, ha some door covers have screws, some are just handles. Right. So you need a 5 16 nut driver most of the time, sometimes you need a quarter inch nut driver. Alright, so we're going to pull this cover off. Alright, so this door switch right here shuts off power to the control board. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to take a surface magnet, we're going to set it right on there. Alright, and then we're going to go ahead and turn our switch on on, and our blower motor turns on. Alright, for safety's sake, before we start measuring voltage in there, because of the amperage in there, we're going to go ahead and turn the power off again. And we're first going to determine if the blower motor is getting turned on due to heat or due to cooling, okay? So typically the fan, if you have the fan option right here, which is usually the green wire, that typically is going to turn the furnace on or air handler at the lower fan speed, okay? So in this case, uh, we're going to turn the, we're actually going to pull the heat off and we're going to turn the switch back on and we're going to see if it's powering the blower motor at the lower speed of heat or the higher speed of cooling. All right. So we just turned the power back on. We heard a click, but the blower motor is not turning on. Okay. So with our multimeter, we can even confirm this. All right. If we have a voltage from heat to common. Okay. Right now we have 124 volts. Okay. So we know blower motor's calling. Now we're a little bit safer to start probing in here. Okay. With our voltage, we're going to be looking for 24 volts from the green wire. Okay. This is the green wire right here to the common wire. Okay. Which is right here. So let's go ahead and see if we have 24 volts. Okay. Anything above 24 volts is adequate, so normally it's going to be somewhere around 27, 28 volts coming off that transformer. So presently, if we read between G and common, we have 28 volts, and that means our green fan terminal is calling uh, for the fan. Okay, we can always check power going to the thermostat from common to red. Okay, and we have 28 volts. Just say, let's just take a look at it. We're going to leave this probe on common. We'll check our cooling. Y to common. We don't have any voltage. That means that cooling is not calling. Okay, W to common. Okay, that means that that's not calling either. So the one that's actually calling, you have the red, the R, comes from this control board, from the power source of 24 volts off of this board to your thermostat. Inside the thermostat, it connects to G and finds its way back to this control board with the green wire. And that's why we have 28 volts. All right. So this is just a signal port. If once this board sees 28 volts right here on this terminal, on the G terminal, okay, it knows to turn the fan on. So what, what could be the problem? All right. Inside the thermostat, real quick, like a very quick instance of what you can do, you can just pull the faceplate off, okay, just like that. And, you know, you could have this compartment closed and this connected, and you could just pull the face off of the thermostat just like this, and then if the blower motor stops, if the blower motor stops and your thermostat was actually on auto and this was on off, and you pull this off and the blower motor stops and you know that this part is bad right here okay 
if you pull this off and the fan motor continues to run, or in this case, you know, we have this pulled off, okay? This is your hot to your blower motor. We've pulled our face plate off, and we come back down here, and we still read, if we still read 28 volts from there to there, which we do, okay? Then we know that this is not the problem. All right, so you're just going to take one step at a time and figure out where the problem lies. The next, the next point right here, the terminal block could be bad. All right, the next thing that you're going to do is at this terminal block, this terminal block could be bad. Okay, and this terminal block potentially somehow could be connecting your G to your R. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this back plate of the thermostat out of play by pulling out that G wire just like that. Okay? So then we come back to the furnace. We check again. Do we have our 28 volts? And we do. Okay? So that's not the problem. Okay? The next thing is the thermostat wire itself. Alright? So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the power off to the furnace and we're going to take off the green wire. Okay? And in this case we're going to take off this this other wire that is connected to the G terminal. All right? So, now nothing is on the G terminal. If the blower motor turns on, when you turn the power on, here we go. If the blower motor still has a 120 volt signal, okay, even when there's no signal wire on the G, so if you test right here like this, you test here and here. If you're reading 120 volts here, then you know your control board is bad, all right? Because the control board is sending a false voltage over to the fan motor. Alright? So that's how you would test that. In this case, we did not read any voltage, right? We read no voltage. Okay, we're at 1.1 volts, which is meaning that there's no volts. Okay? So, our problem is actually in the thermostat wire. Okay? So we're going to turn the power off. You can look around, a lot of times the problem is in the, the back plate somewhere, right along here, somewhere there's a nick in the connections, okay, or a lot of times it's here, that there could be a nick in the connection. If it's not there, then what you need to do is, is you're going to have to exchange one of the thermostat wires. In this case, for a furnace and air conditioning system, you need five wires. Okay, so you have, if you run 18 6 gauge, which is what I always do, okay, if I need five wires, I run six wires. So 18 6 wire. All right, so what you can do is you can take this green wire out and you're going to cut it, okay, and then you're going to strip the brown wire and you're going to put the brown wire in the G terminal. At the same thing over here, right here, you're going to take the brown wire and you're going to put the brown wire along with that original white wire. Okay. A lot of times you're not you're not going to have this additional wire most of the time. You're only going to have your one green wire. Okay. So once you take that out, you're going to put your brown wire in. Okay. And then you've effectively changed out your green wire out of play. Then you shouldn't have any problems. Okay. So you can use that concept for any one of those wires. Whether it's the white wire is you know, um, maybe the white wire is touching the red wire somewhere, or the yellow wire is touching the red wire. Okay, that, if the yellow wire was touching the red wire somewhere, then that would turn cooling on. If the red wire was touching the white wire somewhere, then that would be what's turning heat on. Okay? That's all the thermostat is doing. The thermostat's acting like a switch. Thermostat's hat sees that you have hot right here in red, and it's touching red and green. Okay, to turn the fan on. It touches red and yellow to turn cooling on. It touches red and white to turn the heat on. 
and at the control board it's just seeing the 24 volt or 28 volt signal on either the G, the W, or the Y terminal and it's telling the control board what to do. If, it's, if it sees 28 volts at the white wire then it says okay I gotta run the sequence of operation for the furnace. Okay. If it's the yellow wire right there what it's going to do is it's going to turn the blower motor up at its higher fan speed all right and you should also have another wire touching this that runs out to the outdoor unit and turns cooling on all right in the case of just this green wire if it has 28 volts here it tells the blower motor to turn on it it sends 120 volts to the blower motor and turns it on okay so that's how that works all right so you always want to run an additional thermostat wire just in case this ever happens, okay? So you want to always run that additional wire. So if you run, if you only need two wires for the outdoor condenser, then run three. I always run 18-3 wire out there, all right? If it's a heat pump, it's going to need more wires, all right? You have to account for your reversing valve or maybe it's a two-speed heat pump, but whatever you need, you know, with maybe your two outdoor wires for your outdoor temp sensor, you always run an additional one or maybe even two wires, okay? So if this problem ever happened, you don't have to change out the entire thermostat wire and fish it down the wall and all that, all right? I mean, there's also wireless units that you can wire in to the control board and then have your, your thermostat on the wall as well, okay? But uh, in the case of the thermostat wire, you know, you don't want to have to replace that, okay? Well, I hope that helped. In this case, our problem was a thermostat wire, and we're just going to go ahead and switch it out with a brown wire. After we do that, we're good, and then we can go ahead and plug our heat back in. Presently, our power is off, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.